Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. I have some great DIYs in store for you that I am very excited about. So let's just go ahead and just jump right on in. For our first DIY, you are going to need a bunny sign that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. And to get started, you will need a yardstick. I did pick mine up at Lowe's. And I cut a little over nine inches off of the bottom of it. And then I am going to take the bunny sign apart. You can see the little happy Easter typically dangled from the little bunny head. And I am going to glue it down to the yardstick. Now I'm going to go down as far as I can on the top with the little bunny head without being able to see the yardstick. And then I am going to go about five or six inches down with the happy and then the same with the Easter, just hot gluing them all in place. Once we have them glued down in place, we are going to stick them aside and we are going to start with this white decorative mesh. I am going to cut three pieces off for three different sections. So you're going to have nine pieces total and then you're going to need three different pipe cleaners and we are just going to roll them up as though we were making a wreath and we are going to have three to each section and then we're just going to tie them off with our little white pipe cleaner here. And then we are going to set them aside. Uh, the main purpose for this is it will just add some dimension to the ribbon when we put the ribbon in place and you won't see all that much of it. And then I also took a couple of my Easter decorative mesh that I had picked up at the Dollar Tree, one in blue, one in purple, and one in pink. And you will cut three pieces of each color because we're gonna combine them. So each little section will have one blue, one purple, and one pink. This is just going a little bit more from behind our ribbon once we have it all put together. Again, just th tie the three different colors with your pipe cleaner and set them aside. Then I have this variety of ribbon. They all came from the Dollar Tree, except for that white one, well, kind of a cream color I just showed you. That was $2 from the Dollar General. I did get it around Christmas time, but I absolutely love it, so I'm including it in this, so that way we don't have too much color. And then these over here, the one with the carrots, um, the burlap with the little ribbon here. This is just so that way we can add a little bit of dimension, a little bit of something different so that way there's not too much color um, and then it kind of looks maybe a little bit too crazy. I wanted to have that in there to kind of help pull from the browns too that you see in this sign. So now we're gonna be cutting our ribbon about 11 inches. So each piece will all be 11 inches. We wanted it long enough to where it didn't look too small and look odd on this sign. I wanted it to at least go the same length of those little carrots. So I am just going to cut one piece of each for all three bows that we are making. And then I put it in a pile. Then we are going to get started on some messy bows. Again, no rhyme or reason. I did kind of take the cream color and the burlaps and the ones with a little bit of brown and I kind of spaced them out so that way it can separate um, some of the colors we have in here. And I am just laying them out the same way I would a messy bow. Then I'm going to take the colored mesh and I am going to place it in between some of the ribbons. So not at the bottom, not at the top. It's going to kind of be in the middle. It will help elevate some of those ribbons and allow it to be seen a little bit. So that way it don't get too covered up by all of the ribbon um, once we get it in place. And as you can see, I think every single one of my animals came um, into this video this time. Uh, they love it when I DIY apparently. They wanna be part of the videos. 
and we are just going to use that same pipe cleaner that we had the colored mesh and we are just going to undo it when we get them all together and use it to tie all these up as well and then just separate the ribbons and the mesh and make it as fluffy as as, as possible and then i decided i was going to color up the space of the yardstick that you could see with this scrap ribbon that I had. Use anything to cover it up. If you want to paint it, feel free to do that as well. I just thought it would end up taking too many coats and didn't want to give it that many coats. So I thought this was a quick way to cover it up so that way you wouldn't be able to see it behind my bows um, and was just a little bit quicker for me. But it's all personal preference. If you want to paint it, go ahead. Then the first thing we are going to attach is the white mesh. We're just going to flip it around and we're going to tie it on the back side. And we're just going to fluff out those pieces a little bit so that way we can place the bow in between there as well. And I also did decide to put some raffia in here. Again, just to add a little bit more dimension from all the color that we have going on. And I thought it just gave it another little touch. And we're just going to tie that to the back as well from the white mesh as well and we are going to tie them together so that way they are nice and secure and push them flat so that way we don't have any issues pushing this against the wall so now you can see our bows are nice and full i love how they look i love the messy bow look and i am going to hang it up on my wall so that way i can see how everything lays and cut some of these pieces a little bit you want to make sure you can see the happy easter that is on the carrots and after i was done with the video i actually did have to go back in and trim mine up even a little bit more because i wanted to be able to see it and then i did remove the bow that came on the bunny and i placed one that matched the rest of the ribbon that we have now on our lovely little door hanger here and I just thought this was so cute. I have wanted to make this for a little while. I have had all the supplies and I've already had this in my mind. And it actually came out exactly how I had envisioned. And it is a super cute door hanger or just somewhere to have on your wall. It, I just thought it's super colorful for Easter coming up and definitely a large item you can have displayed in your home. So this video is being included on a playlist, Easter Wishes and Bunny Kisses, hosted by Living My Best Life with Lisa Marie and Indy Annie Jones. So make sure you go check out their pages, check out all the videos in this playlist, and see some of the gorgeous things everyone is bringing you for Easter. So for this next DIY, we are going to use this wood bunny that we picked up from the Dollar Tree and a piece of scrapbook paper that I picked up from the Hobby Lobby. I am just going to use my handy dandy Mod Podge and I am going to put my scrapbook paper in place. You do want to make sure that you rub it down, use something to smooth it out so that way you don't have any bubbles or ripples and make sure it's nice and as smooth as possible as you are able to make it anyways. And then once it is dry in place, it don't take long for Mod Podge to dry. Sometimes that can be a good and bad thing. I am just going to take my X-Acto knife and I am going to cut out the bunny around the paper. And then when I get it cut out, I always do go back in with my Mod Podge and fill in any pieces around the edges that maybe didn't get as much Mod Podge or that are lifting up and I make sure everything is glued down well in place. And then I'm gonna set it aside so it has time to fully dry. Then I'm going to use the sign I picked up at the Dollar Tree this past fall and I am going to paint it in my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. Now it actually, I kind of expected this to take three or four coats. It didn't, believe it or not. It actually only took two coats and it covered it quite well. I, you can't see anything underneath it. And if you don't have one of these signs left over, they have so many little wood square signs like this. They had some for Valentine's Day at the Dollar Tree. Use any little type of a wood plank that you could use. Anything would work. Then I have these half beads. They're like half round. They're cut in half. 
that I got from Amazon. I will have the link in my description box below. And I am going to use one of them for the tail. I wanted this to be a little more rustic. I didn't want anything fluffy. I was going for a little bit of a different look. And I'm going to have it down for the little paws. And I did kind of speed through the sanding step because who wants to sit and watch me sand? But I did go around and sand all the edges because I wanted them to be nice and smooth. Once I have all of the little wood beads glued in place with my hot glue, then I'm gonna take that plaster paint again, and I'm gonna make sure my brush is pretty dry and kind of dry brush over all of the beads, around all of the edges to the bunny, and even just kind of swooping in towards the bunny. Now I'm not necessarily covering up all the scrap, um, scrapbook paper that I have glued on my bunny, but I, I did want it to have a good amount of dry brushing around it just to help it go in with the look that I'm looking for and blend in well. And I just thought it was going to be super cute um, sign for Easter, not too bold. It gives you a little bit of color and a lot of white. I don't know. I just, I'm really look this Easter. And then I am going to use a couple Jenga blocks on the back of my bunny in order to help it stand up on my little wood base that I have here, because I do want this to be a standing sign. I don't want to have to worry about if I'm having it placed by a wall to hold it up. I want to be able to set it anywhere because it's just too adorable to not share. So I'm just going to hot glue for some extra support, and then you are going to see me hot glue the center Jenga block in place first, because then that will hold my bunny up and stable while I glue two along where the paws are. And I did take a little bit of ribbon and I did put a little bow on the front of the bunny just for a little extra touch. I did stick with that kind of off-white color to go with the color that I painted on the beads and around the bunny itself. And I just thought she turned out adorable. You'll have to let me know what you think. I am just so ready to get all of my spring and Easter decor out and just all the pretty colors that come with it. I still have my St. Patrick's Day decorations up right now, but those are probably not going to last much longer in my home. You'll have to let me know what your home is decorated in currently in the comments down below. Thank you for stopping by my channel today. If you are looking for creative inspiration, ideas on how to decorate on a budget, or just looking for a fun community of friends, then be sure to hit that subscribe button and click the drop down menu so you can be one of the first to get notified every time I upload a new video. Also, be sure to follow me over on Instagram at Home with Rebecca Jane, where I post even more tips and ideas on home decorating. This next DIY is super quick and super easy. You're just going to need a couple of the wood blocks from the Dollar Tree. And then I have these napkins that I picked up actually from the Dollar General, but they were only a dollar. When I saw them, I knew I had to have them. I just thought this bunny was adorable and loved the little eggs that was on it. I just loved everything about it. So I'm going to cut out the eggs. I'm going to cut out the little bunny. And I am just going to Mod Podge it in place on my little wooden block here. Now, on your napkins, when you're doing Mod Podge with them, you do want to make sure you only have one layer of your napkin. I thought here that I had it down to one layer. I did not realize until I got it on um, that there was still another thin layer on there. So really double check, pull at the edges in an area where you're not worried about if you accidentally rip it and make sure you are down to one layer. Put a little bit of Mod Podge down. You don't need a lot when you are doing a napkin. Napkins can be very thin and if you put too much, you could actually easily tear your napkin and just lightly press it in place. It don't take much to be able to smooth out any bubbles. And I just think napkins are really easy to Mod Podge with. Sometimes it's actually easier than paper. Paper, a little bit thicker, can be a little bit more complicated. So I love doing this effect, especially when I find a napkin that is as adorable as this bunny is.
Once we have each excess section in place, then we're just going to cut off the edges. So that way we can move on to the next section. And then if you have, I did on this first one, I wanted the bunny to overlap a couple sides to my block. So I did have this one side where you will see a little bit of a gap. So I just kind of overlapped the napkin from one of the eggs and put it in place here. The nice thing about working with napkins is they go on so smooth, you can't even tell when you connect a couple pieces like that. It works really, really well. Again, I just love working with them. So if you find a napkin that you think is adorable, you don't just have to use it as a napkin. Think outside the box. Think of the many things you can use it for. And then the second block, I'm just only going to put all the different eggs on it. And I'm going to kind of have some of them angled and I'm just going to have them all a little different. And once we have both of our blocks done with our Mod Podge and napkin in place, then we are just going to take my truffle paint and we are going to dry brush along all of the edges to both of the blocks just to give them a little bit more of a rustic look. I'm not going to add too much. And I think this was just the perfect final touch for something so simple. They turned out so adorable. And lastly, this last DIY, we are going to use another one of those napkins. I just thought they were too cute to not use more than once. And I wanted to be able to use the full scene of this little bunny. So this time I am going to make sure that I get it pulled apart the way it's supposed to be. And we are going to Mod Podge it in place on this wood kind of plank sign pellet sign, I guess you can call it, that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. Are you all as ready for summer as I am? It has been so warm here in northern Indiana that I it just makes me so ready for summer. And then doing DIYs like this definitely continue to keep me feeling ready for summer. I don't know about you, but I'm just more than ready. Once you have the napkin in place, just add any additional Mod Podge that you need along the edges and smooth it out with your fingers. Again, making sure you don't tear it, but we also want to make sure there's no bubbles. And then I am going to fill in the gap on the edge here and try to piece in some additional pieces. And the reason I had to go higher up was because I did not want the eye to end up in the area where I'm cutting off here, as you can see where, with my X-Acto knife. And the eye was originally right in that area. So I had to move the napkin up a little bit more so that way that didn't happen. And then I'm just using the same truffle paint and I'm just going to dry brush along all the edges. I'm going to add a little ribbon here at the end and a, a little ribbon or some twine with some beads to give it the perfect final touch. And I'm just super happy with this super sweet, simple project with this just adorable bunny napkin.